Good morning, New Hope. I am so glad you're in the room this morning. And those of you who are unable to be with us this morning, you're watching via uh, Facebook and our website and all of that good stuff. I have to tell you, you're really missing out on the atmosphere in this room, right? Well, I have to tell you, as the oldest guy on staff, I am really excited about what God is doing on our staff. And I want to give a shout out to our Hispanic ministry search team. They are the ones who put in the work. They are the ones who met together. They are the ones who believed together that God would bring the right candidate our way. And I have to tell you, I, I am so excited about their choice. And I am excited about what God is going to do in the future. And so I hope that you, as Anglos, English-speaking people, will support and stand with our Hispanic ministry and see what God does for the future. Right? It is truly exciting. Truly is. Hey, we have been in a series... Uh, uh, called uh, Make Your Life Count. And last Sunday, I was unable to be with you due to circumstances beyond my control. And uh, I just put in the bulletin, if you have those sermon notes that typically show up in your bulletin, uh, you can find them there. Now, before I get into that, guys, listen up. August the 2nd, we're having a guy's night out. Thank you. Good to hear from the ladies. Okay. Uh, guys, we're going to do a baseball game together. We're not going to play it. We're going to watch it. Uh, we're going to go up to Tri-Cities and have a men's night out. Ladies, you stay home and take life easy and relax having the guy out of your house. And we're going to band together and have a good time. So please note that announcement in your bulletin up on the left corner. Uh, take note of that. More information will be coming your way right away as far as what cost is. I don't know. Is the time in there? I didn't pay attention. The time's in there and all that good stuff. So please plan now to join together with other guys here at New Hope and have a fun time. Okay? So please take note of that. Finally. Before I jump into our series, just want to remind you of the cross. It's there to remind you and me that there are lost lives in our life. And Jesus has instilled in us the reason to share Christ with people in our life. So I hope that you will take that seriously and that you will, as you walk in on Sundays, that is illuminated for uh, a very specific reason. And so I hope that you'll do that. Now, turn to Luke chapter 12. Uh, I was unable to be with you last week, so in the sermon notes, there is a place there that I have given you some information from last week, okay? So what I'm hoping you will do, here's my, my hope, that you will read Luke chapter 12, go back and pick up those first three and, and look at the scenario that Jesus has as he's teaching his disciples. Please note, he is focusing primarily on his disciples. He is talking to them, and there are thousands of people gathered around him. And many of them are listening to him, as hard as that might have been in that day and time. They didn't sit down in nice, comfortable seats in an air-conditioned uh, room. They were outside, they were in the dirt, they were milling around, and Jesus began to really focus in on the 12 men that were gathered close, closest to him. Now, he responded to the crowd, he shared with the crowd, but as you will see in chapter 12, several times he is leaning into his most devoted men who are right there. Everybody else gets to listen. So here's my assumption this morning. I have an assumption that you're in this room. And you're in this room because you have some sort of a relationship with Jesus. 
My assumption is, for the most part, that many of us in this room want to have even better relationship with Jesus. We want to walk with Jesus. We desire to love Jesus. We want to represent Jesus. We want to do the best we can to show love and adoration and honor to our Lord and Savior. So based on that assumption, most of what I'm going to share with you this morning has to do with us as believers. If you happen to be here this morning and you have never made that distinction for yourself, you, you have never really surrendered your life over to Jesus, it's, a, it's something that either you've held back on or you don't know much about it or you think we're all crazy or whatever, I want to invite you to consider what we're going to look at this morning and to consider the future of your life. Because every person in this room has no clue what tomorrow will bring. Even though everybody in this room has plans and ideas and you're dreaming about things in the future and you're looking forward to tomorrow and all of that, I want you to know, my friend, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I depend totally, completely on my Lord and Savior leading and directing me and understanding he's got me in his hand and he is already in tomorrow. So we're talking about making your life count now so you have no regret later. I think one of the sad things in my own personal life is as I reflect back on what could have been what I had the opportunity to do and I missed it because I was too filled up with me. I was concerned about me. I was worried about me. How am I going to make it? What am I going to do with my life? I remember back many years ago when I was sitting where many of you who are younger, much younger than I am, are sitting and wondering, what's the future going to be? I have to be honest with you, when I was 21 years old, I thought people who were in their 60s were ancient relics. I am now an ancient relic. And time has flown by. Those of you who understand what I'm saying, would you nod your head? Yes, I understand. Time flies back by really quick. Okay, listen. Time moves forward regardless of what we're facing. Tomorrow always looms ahead of us. And Jesus in Luke chapter 12, I love how Luke just records all of this and how he gives us Jesus' perspective about living life as a follower of his. And I want to encourage you. It doesn't matter where you are in your perception of your walk with Jesus. Don't quit. That's my mantra. I say it all the time to people. Don't quit. Don't give up. If you do, you have no idea what you'll miss out on tomorrow. And that's why today is so significant. So we're going to close our series today with this question. Are you ready? One of the things, see, I'm a sports guy, sort of, kind of. I used to play sports, now I observe them, okay? And uh, uh, when Monday Night Football came on uh, back in the 70s, anybody remember that besides me? Yeah, some of you are willing to admit. Okay, so when it came on, one of the things they would say, Are you ready? And of course, they expected everybody in America to look at their TV and say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, there were some who did that. I know. I know firsthand there were some who did that. Are you ready? Let me ask you a personal, private question right now. Right where you're sitting. Right in your own life right now. If life were to come to an end today for you, where would you spend eternity? Now, many of us in this room would say, Oh, yes, I will go to heaven. And, and the follow-up question is, how do you know that you're going to heaven? Well, I've asked Jesus to come into my life. But let me ask you 
something that we should take a little more serious reflection upon? If Jesus showed up in your life today and took you to heaven, would you have regrets of how you've lived your life? Would you be ready to look Jesus in the eye and say, I am so glad you're my Savior and I sought to honor you with my life. Not what all the stuff you did, but Jesus, I love you. I am so glad I'm with you for all of eternity. Now, Generally speaking, in the American Christian culture, we always look forward to that time when the Bible teaches us that Jesus is going to come back for his people, his church, for the Jews, and those of us who are followers of Jesus, all of us together. He is coming back at some point, and the Bible always talks about the future in regards to this. But what if Jesus chose that today is the day you're going to leave this life. You see, one of the things that the Bible teaches us is no one knows. No one determines. In spite of what our medical culture and our scientific culture and our American culture is teaching us, no one, no one supersedes God's plan for your life. We live at a time where we are doing everything known to man to try to extend life, to try to live younger, if not just looking younger. We try everything. We will attempt anything in our world today to remain as young as we can be so that we can live longer here on earth. And lately in my life, I've been asking myself, David, why would you want to do that? I'm like the Apostle Paul now in my life. Lord, if you take me, wonderful. If you make me stay here, okay. But boy, I wish I could be with you. I'm feeling that even more and more inside of my heart and my life. Because as I look around us in this world, as I think about what God is allowing to take place, this is an this is just not the place. I mean, if anybody is living to spend eternity on earth, boy, how sad. And that's what Jesus talks about today, okay? If I am ready, if I am ready to go, then there is no surprise when Jesus comes. Now, he may allow me the privilege of living my life for an extended time beyond today. He may even grant me the privilege of being alive when he comes in the clouds as the Bible teaches us. But the point that sometimes I think we're missing is that he calls us here in Luke chapter 12, to be ready regardless. So jump into the passage with me, if you would. Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 35. Okay, here's what Jesus says to his disciples. Now remember, get the, get the context here. He's talking, these men are leaning in, and thousands of people around them are trying to get in on the conversation, and they're trying to listen, okay? And Jesus makes this statement, stay dressed, for action and keep your lamps burning that is just a simple phrase of military be alert every single moment and in that day keeping your lamps burning boy the people understood that okay so today we would say keep your LEDs going let them shine just recently, Sheila and I bought some new lights for outside of our house, and they're LEDs. And they promote themselves as lasting forever. Well, we know. <laughs> the inside joke is, of course, they're never going to last forever, but boy, do they shine. They're cool. That's what Jesus is saying to you and to me as he was saying to his men that day. Hey, people, be alert. Be 
ready. Who knows? Maybe today is the day. And so he goes on to explain to them. And he says, and be like servants who are waiting for the master. Who, who's going to be coming home. Wait for him. I love that. Waiting for him to come home from the wedding feast. Now apparently, the master of the house in this story was away at a wedding. Whether it was his own or someone else's, he was away. And all of the servants in this story were waiting. They had no idea when the master would come home. He didn't specify a time to them. So Jesus goes on and says, verse 36, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. In other words, be alert. And when you hear the knock, get the door. I have talked to people over the many years that I've been a part of ministry who are seems like their answer when the question is asked, are you ready for Jesus? Well, I'll be ready. I'll be ready. How many times have we said to someone when they say to us, hey, now be ready. I'm going to pick you up at such and such a time. I'll be ready. I'll be ready. And how often are we not quite ready? The person shows up and we have one last thing we got to take care of. Don't worry, I'll be right there. Have you ever had anybody do that to you? Of course, we've all had that happen at times. We've done it ourselves. Now, be ready because it's going to happen and, and you need to be there on time, okay? And Jesus is pointing out that these servants were ready. Okay? Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. The, the interpretation here is, okay, there are those who are ready and sometimes there are those who are slacking off. And Jesus is pointing out to, to the people gathered around him. Listen, there were people in the household, servants, who may not have been quite as alert, truly, in verse 37, truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service, or, I'm sorry, verse 37, blessed. Let's go back to blessed. How wonderful it is when the servant is awake, when the servant is alert, when the servant is present. Because something great is going to happen. I mean, this is unheard of at that moment in history. In Jesus' day, this was not a common thing, okay? The master never, ever lifted a finger to do something for servants. That, this was not the common thing. It happened. There were always good masters, good owners but not always. So, I say to you, he will change his clothes. He'll go from being dressed up as a master of the house would be. He'll take off all of his nice clothing and he'll put on rags like a servant. Okay? That's what Jesus is saying to them. He will have them recline at the table. This is so cool. He calls all the servants together and say, hey, sit around, everybody take life easy, lean back, enjoy, because now I am going to serve you. See, when we're ready, when we're available, when we're alert, when we're paying attention, Jesus promises us that when he comes and escorts us into heaven, whenever that might be, he will become the servant for us. And my friend, I have no clue what that's going to look like. I have some little clues in Scripture, but 
Frankly, I've never been to heaven. But I am so looking forward to what that's going to appear to be. Imagine the, the feeling of the servants. Imagine how great they must have felt. How affirmed they were, they were feeling. How incredibly blessed they must have felt when the, the master of the house lowers himself to us and he serves us in rags like our own. When he delivers the food, when he cleans the plate, when he sweeps the floor as they would have done in that day. It didn't matter to them if it was 2 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, midnight, or 6 a.m. It didn't matter. The reason was they are celebrating and enjoying something they never thought possible. So, in verse 38, Jesus goes on and says, If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But, I, but know this, now he changes. In verse 38, he concludes the story. How blessed they are. My friend, if you and I are alert for Jesus, it won't be a surprise when he comes. It will be a total shock to everybody else, but not to you and me. And it's not about where you are or what you're doing. It's not about the circumstances that you find yourself in. It's not about the surroundings or anything else. It's about the fact that your heart is knitted to the heart of God and you're listening and waiting for the Father to say to the Son, Go. And that, my friend, is going to happen. And there are times, many times, here on earth, when the Father says to the Son, It's time for that one. So it doesn't matter whether I get to go to heaven collectively with my brothers and sisters, breathing and enjoying life, or whether I am on my own. In recent times, I've visited with several individuals who are slipping away. And one of the best things that nourishes my heart was recently when I was talking to one who is in that transition. This person looked at me and said, Pastor Dave, I'm ready to go. Wow. I want so bad to be like that. That if today is the day, I'm ready. Like you, I have a life. Like you, I have people in my life. Like you, I live my life every day. And I love being with the people that I have in my life. I love doing this on Sundays. I love getting together with my family. I love getting together with my own immediate family. I love all those things. I'm looking forward, like you are, to those times of fun where you get together. I mean, it's summer, right? It's summer, so we ought to be doing stuff and having fun. Obviously, look around you. And that's okay. But in the midst of all this, we ought to be so alert for the coming of Jesus. And then in verse 39, he changes. But know this, that if the master had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. Verse 40. You also must be ready like that. He changes the picture. He changes what he says. He's giving us another vivid illustration. If you and I know when a thief is going to break into our house, what will we do? We'll stay home. 
we'll make sure that our security system is working. We will make sure the windows are locked and the doors are locked. We will make sure that our weapons are at the ready. Right? Those of you who have that sort of thing. You will make sure you haven't fed the dog for five days. Just let that thief break in. Woof! Chomp, chomp, chomp. See, when you and I know something is going to happen, we make sure we're ready. When you go on vacation, as some of you are still going to go on vacation, and you're anticipating it, you're hoping for it, what do you do? You start packing. Now, I could spend a whole day talking with you about what that means and what that looks like, but each of you know what you do. Some of you, it takes a little longer to get ready to go on vacation than others. What's the point? Jesus is making the point. Be ready. Be ready. Why? For I am coming when you least expect it. Two things I want to leave you with this morning. Number one. Live out what you say you believe. You know what that means? Don't talk a good game play a good game. Don't talk about how you're going to do something. Do it. Words are so manipulative. We can fake it with words. We can't fake it with actions. Words can sound so wonderful and mean so little. Jesus is calling us, live what you say you believe. If you say you believe in me, then live for me with your life. Finally, defy human logic. Follow Jesus today. Defy human logic. You know what human logic is? It's our own personal determination on how life should be lived. We've got it all figured out. We know as humans how we want to go. We know our aspirations. We know our dreams. We know how we feel about everything under the sun. We have our own opinion about it all. And human logic says, why would I follow someone I have never met? Why would I give my life to something I know nothing about? I gave my life to someone. I gave my life to something that I could not explain and figure out many years ago, like some of these who this morning were baptized. I believed that Jesus is who he says he is. I believe that Jesus did what he said he would do. And I believe that Jesus is going to take me to heaven one day because I invited him to take over my life. Have you done that? For many in this room? Yeah, you've done that. But are you willing to do it today? To follow Him today? Are you allowing Him to govern your life? To call the shots of your life? You know, so many of us in this room have already said the words, have already taken the step. Is it as real today as it was the day that you said yes to Jesus? In a moment, our 
team under Kevin's leadership is going to uh, close with a song. And I invite them to come on up. Um, and in a moment, we're just going to participate together. You're going to be invited to stand. But maybe this morning, you're not quite as ready as you thought you were. Maybe there are some things going on inside that are limiting you and prohibiting you from walking with Jesus like Connie spoke about earlier this morning. It's never too late until it's too late. But also, if you're here this morning and you've never invited Jesus to take over your life, you can do that this morning. You can do it right where you're sitting. You can do it if you come forward during the song, after the song. We invite you to come forward. We would love to pray with you. We would love to give you something that would encourage you and help you and sustain you. In a moment while the crew is singing and you're joining, I'm going to invite our elders and our pastors and, and our staff to be up here. We want to be available to you. We want to encourage you. So Kevin, lead us. And if the Lord is prompting your heart this morning, don't hold back. Step up. Stand with us if you would.